Hello and welcome back. In this video tutorial, we'll be creating our first object-oriented Java program. Unlike the typical Hello World, this program will have one class, one object, and one instance method being called, which should qualify this simple program as an object-oriented program. In all our basic tutorials, we are using Dr. Java. Creating a program consists of implementing the Java classes that make up the program. A class is created in four steps, typing the code, saving, compiling, and then running. Let's start by typing the code in the code editor. Package Sheridan semicolon. The first line of a Java file is the package declaration. A package logically groups classes the same way a folder groups files physically on your hard drive. While not mandatory, in practice all classes are part of a package. Let's now define our class called Object Oriented Program. We'll leave one empty line, line number two, to separate the package declaration from the class declaration. Public class object oriented program followed by a block. A Java file usually contains one and only one public class. A program contains many such classes, each saved in its own file. The purpose of our object oriented program class is job, if you wish, is to represent the actual computer program we are executing. Line 3, public class object oriented program, represents the class declaration. A declaration introduces a new word that is not part of the Java programming language but one that we define ourselves in our programs. For every word we type, the Java compiler must understand its meaning in order to successfully translate the code into action. In this case, we are defining the meaning of the word object-oriented program. It is important to note that keywords, such as public and class, are words in our program that are defined in the Java language itself and do not need to be declared. A class declaration written in line 3, it's always followed by a class definition block, line 4 to 6. The body of the class must follow the declaration and is marked by curly brackets. Always type both brackets to open and close the block, such that you do not forget or mix your code blocks. Mixing blocks is one of the most common hard-to-fix syntax errors for beginning programmers. Since our class represents the Java program itself, it must define the program's main method. Inside the class definition block, between the two curly brackets on line 4 and 6, we'll start typing the main method. Public static void main string square brackets args closing the parenthesis followed by the definition block, which is marked by curly brackets. The main method is a public static method and takes one argument. Just like a class, a method has a declaration that introduces the name of the method, main in this case, and its properties, visibility, public, return type, void, other modifiers like static, as well as the arguments of the method, in this case one argument named args. The declaration of the method is followed by the definition, which is a code block containing the statements that will be executed when the method is called. The main method is the first method of the program and it is called by the runtime environment. Let's now implement the main method. A true object-oriented program, no matter how simple, should have at least an object to represent the program itself. So let's create an object variable named program. Object-oriented program. This is the class which represents the type of the variable followed by the name of the variable, program, and followed by the initialization statement, equal new object-oriented program. Objects are capable of doing things just like real-world objects are. An object's functionality is defined in its methods. In our case, a program can run, so let's define a run method. We'll get out of the main method for now. We'll make sure we stay within the body of the class. And on line 11, which is outside of the main method but still inside the class definition block, we'll type our run method. 
private void run followed by the method definition block. The run method is a private method that does not return any value. Let's fill the run method with a few print statements. As before, the statements in the method must be declared inside the method definition block between line 12 and line 14. System.out.println System.out.println Hello Object Oriented World System.out.print Line And that would be the end of our run method. In order for the statements inside the method to be executed, the method must be called. The only method that does not need to be called explicitly is the main method, which is called by the Java Virtual Machine. Now let's go back to the main method and use the program object to call our run method. On line 8, after the program object is declared, it can be used to invoke its functionality, program.run. We are now ready for the second step of writing a program, which is saving our code. Let's click Save. Since this is the first class of the program, we will need to create a program folder, followed by a package folder, and save the file inside the package folder. Let's move to the dev root, the folder where we keep all our programs. Let's create a program folder can call the program folder something that uh, will signify what the program does or the program name. In this case, we'll call it first o program. Inside the program folder, we have to create a package folder. The package folder name must be identical to the name of the package as declared in the code at the beginning of the file. The names must be identical in both spelling and case. The class is declared in package Sheridan, which means we have to create a folder named Sheridan, starting with lowercase. Inside the package folder, we can now save the file. The name of the file must match the name of the class in both spelling and case. And Dr. Java makes sure that by default the name of the class does that. So we are now ready to save the file. Notice at the top of the Dr. Java window the full path of this Java file. Dev root, first o program, Sheridan, object training program dot Java. Let's now go to the third step of creating a program, which is compiling it. If the program has any syntax errors, they will need to be resolved before you are able to run the program. In this case, it looks like somehow, while we were typing our code, we've deleted the closing curly bracket of the class definition. You notice the class starts its declaration in line 3, the class definition starts in line 4, and the definition does not end with a curly bracket. The syntax error shown in the compiler output window it provides us with the exact number where the error was detected. That may not be the line number where the error actually is. And an error message. In this case, the compiler tells us that it reached the end of the file while parsing the code and yet cannot successfully translate. Let's put back our closing curly bracket on line 17. Notice how Dr. Java identifies the block that it has been closed by the curly bracket. Let's try to compile again. The compiler output now says compilation completed, which means the file was successfully compiled with no syntax errors. We are now ready to run the program. 
inspect the output of the program in the interactions pane or in the console pane. And note how the statements inside the run method were executed and they've printed the messages they received as arguments. Let's run the program through the auto trace feature of Dr. Java to see how statements actually execute. In the debugger menu, let's enable the debug mode. Let's toggle a breakpoint. Let's run the program in debugging mode. The debugger is now stopped on line 7 waiting for further instructions and let's click automatic trace. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Come back again soon and in the meantime, learn purpose.